Hello, baseball fans, collectors, and investors, and welcome back to Iconic Baseball. I am Iconic Al, and today's video, number 95, features a player that I believe has been largely slept on among collectors and investors. When the question is posed to most fans, who are the active first ballot Hall of Famers in the game today? I think most people think, all right, um, Mike Trout, Mookie Betts, Albert Pujols, Miguel Cabrera, Max Scherzer, Clayton Kershaw, Justin Verlander. I, I believe those are the names that most people, you know, really associate with the elite first ballot type of guys in the game today. But I think there's one they're forgetting. We're talking about a guy who has more Gold Glove awards than any other active player. We're talking about a guy who is quietly establishing himself as the best all-around third baseman since the great Mike Schmidt. We're talking, of course, about Nolan Arenado. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and crackers, Jack. I don't care if I never get back. Let me root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Nolan Arenado. Why should I care? about Nolan Arenado? Well, he's probably right around the midpoint of his career. After nine seasons, he has nine Gold Glove Awards. That's the first time anyone has ever started a career with nine consecutive Gold Glove Awards. Beyond that, he's the only player to have ever won five Platinum Glove Awards, which is ridiculous. That means you're the best defensive player in the whole league and he's done that five times so in addition to his nine consecutive gold glove awards at third base he has five platinum gloves which solidifies his legacy already as the best of an era so from a defensive standpoint he will emerge from this era that we're in right now as the premier defensive third baseman and one of the greatest of all time on top of that, he's a phenomenal offensive producer. In nine seasons, mostly complete seasons, he stayed healthy, so he's, he hasn't had that catastrophic injury. He's shown he's durable as an offensive player, and uh, he stays in the lineup. He, he gets his, his reps. He posts, as they like to say. He's amassed 269 home runs, 865 RBIs. He's a 288 career hitter, which is great production. He's averaging over 30 home runs a season, 100 RBIs a season, hitting for excellent average. The average dipped a little bit last year, I think, in his transition to a new team in the first season post-pandemic. There were some adjustments, um, but I, I believe he will resurge with the St. Louis Cardinals and, and have a more lasting legacy in St. Louis. He just finished his age 30 season, and he's already ranked number eight on my all-time third baseman list. Just behind number one, Mike Schmidt, number two, George Brett, number three, Eddie Matthews, number four, Chipper Jones, number five, Wade Boggs, number six, Adrian Beltre, and number seven, Brooks Robinson. He is number eight behind those guys. <laughs> Not a bad place to be. And he still has baseball left to play. If he remains productive and consistent into his mid-30s, he should be in the top five. If he remains productive and consistent into his late 30s, which is, you know, not a known, you know, there's, a, there's an if there. But if he does remain productive and consistent into his late 30s, he could rival Mike Schmidt. He has the, the ability, the tools to do it. So, in my mind, he's a very low-risk option in terms of uh, owning an autograph, owning a rookie card, investing in. If the worst you can do is be number eight all time, <laughs> that's pretty good. He's only going to ascend that list as time goes, especially playing for St. Louis. He'll get more opportunities to win in the postseason, maybe get a ring. 
but he'll have much more opportunity to win on the national stage with a better fan base and people that truly do appreciate great baseball in St. Louis, a phenomenal baseball town. So think about Arenado when you're thinking about players that have first ballot Hall of Fame potential, that have minimal risk. And in terms of long-term investability and appeal, there is a floor in. I mean, no matter what he does going forward at this point, he has cemented himself as one of the top 10 third basemen of all time already. How great could he be in the scope of history? We'll find that out in the next five to seven years. All right, let's look at some of the items here for Nolan Arenado. On the left, you see a 2011 Topps Heritage Minor League card of Nolan Arenado, this autograph. Now, a lot of people gravitate toward flagship rookie cards. So this, this is my preference. I like these pre-rookie cards that are a little out of the way. You don't see them as often. And um, it, it shows a young Arenado in a Modesto minor league uniform, uh, something you don't see very much. Uh, and it includes a scouting report and stats on the back uh, that foreshadows the kind of player that he would, he would become. And I like the value that a card like this represents. I think I paid $50 for that. And it was already in a PSA holder. And uh, I think you can still acquire a card like that for under 100 even in today's market. I've had both of these items for at least four or five years. But I still think there's great value in, in pre-rookie cards, minor league autographs. Um, obviously, you want to buy authenticated. Uh, you don't want to take chances or buy something questionable in terms of authenticity. But I think there's something magical about a minor league autograph or a pre-rookie card that shows a young player before they really even hit their stride at the major league level. And um, that's just a personal preference of mine. And they're generally much cheaper than buying a true rookie card or buying a true flagship rookie auto or something like that. So just uh, something to consider. This is a 2011 Heritage, two years before he would actually appear in Major League Baseball. And this, this baseball here, this is a signed Arenado baseball, where he, uh, it's a nice, beautiful, sweet spot autograph, blue ballpoint with the number 28, which thankfully he kept that number 28 when he went over to St. Louis. I always like that when players can maintain some consistency with their jersey number, especially if they sign their number as part of their autograph. So in that case, yes, we have consistency. And this is a PSA DNA certified autograph, which I learned as a young collector, don't mess around with authenticity. Always go for a certified autograph, unless you get it yourself in person. Go with PSA DNA, JSA, or Beckett authentication, if at all possible. Unless you're buying direct from a company like Upper Deck, Steiner, MLB. Make sure it has legitimate authenticity. Don't, don't take chances when you're buying autographs, because... Uh, Especially if you're not well-versed in the hobby, you will get burned. <laughs> I guarantee you. So keep that in mind. Generally, a PSA, no one's ever seen this before, but a PSA has a, um, a matching certificate that comes along with the ball. This number on the certificate matches that little sticker on the ball. So you have a pretty good ability to retain value. You know it's legit. Everyone else knows it's legit, and it's accepted by the hobby as being a authentic autograph, which is very helpful <laughs> from the investment standpoint and also just your peace of mind as a collector where you know you have something that this guy truly held and signed, which is pretty cool. That's what it's all about. All right. Um, well, that's my synopsis of Nolan Arenado. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment to these videos because there are more coming and they're only going to get more exciting as we count our way up from number 100 all the way up the number one greatest and most iconic ball player of all time. Thank you again for tuning in. Keep collecting and stay iconic.